Hi, everyone. My name is Jacob Saley, and I'm a PharmD MBA candidate here at the University of Connecticut. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about tenecteplase as an alternative thrombolytic agent in the acute management of ischemic stroke. Little overview for you. Stroke is the second leading cause of death worldwide. And here in the United States, every 40 seconds, somebody has a stroke. Tenecteplase is a thrombolytic agent that's currently FDA approved for the treatment of myocardial infarction. However, it's recently shown efficacy off-label as a thrombolytic for the management of ischemic stroke as well. There are two main types of strokes, and they are ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes, pictured below. The majority, 87%, are ischemic strokes, and that's characterized by uh, blood clot blocking blood flow to other parts of the brain, whereas a hemorrhagic stroke, as you can see on the right, is when a blood vessel actually bursts and the patient begins to bleed into the intracranial space. Thrombolytic therapy increases the risk of an intracranial hemorrhage or an ischemic stroke becoming a hemorrhagic stroke. So all patients receiving thrombolytic therapy must be monitored for a hemorrhagic conversion. When managing these patients, thrombolytics are often indicated for ischemic strokes. Thrombolytics act by cleaving plasminogen to plasmin, its active form. Plasmin then degrades the fibrin clots and allows for reperf reperfusion to occur. Thrombolytics are contraindicated in hemorrhagic stroke as they will worsen bleeding and make it harder to stop. And the current 2018 American Heart Association guidelines list an active place as a second tier option for stroke behind Altaplace, the current standard of Altaplace, often abbreviated TPA, is the first and only medication that's FDA approved for the acute management of ischemic stroke. It first came onto the market in 1996, and it is dosed weight-based dosing at 0 0.9 milligrams per kilogram up to a max of 90 milligrams IV. This medication has a short half-life, less than five minutes, so 10% is administered as a bolus dose with the remainder as a slow IV infusion. This drug is pretty pricey too, as you see at the bottom, it costs nearly $10,000 for enough drug to treat one. Synactoplase on the other hand, is the current preferred thrombolytic for the treatment of STEMI, and it came onto the market a little bit later in 2000. Uh, the recommended dosing in ischemic stroke is 0 0.25 milligrams per kilogram IV, up to a max dose of 25 milligrams. And this medication has a longer half-life, 22 minutes. Because of this longer action, the full dose can be administered as an IV bolus over 5 to 10 seconds. It's also significantly cheaper, about two-thirds the cost of all to place to treat one. On a chemical level, tenecteplase is structurally identical to altaplase, with the exception of three amino acid substitutions. These occur at threonine-103, asparagine-117, and lysine-HRR. These substitutions here alter the activity of the drug by increasing the fibrin specificity. Therefore, the drug is more specific for the cross-linked fibrin clots. 10% increased fibrinogen conservation and 80% greater resistance to plasminogen activator inhibitor, a protein that also promotes clot formation. If you look at the amino acids where they're substituted, that's where we get the abbreviation TNK for tenecteplase. So now it's time for a quick review question. And 
how does connect to place differ from all to place? Give you a second before I go over this. All right, if everybody has their answer, I'm gonna go over it. And the correct answer here is C. Tenecta place has a greater fiber and specificity versus all to place. Option A is incorrect because Tenecta place is longer acting than all to place. B is incorrect because Tenecta place is the cheaper option of the two drugs. D would be incorrect because Tenecta place is given the IV push instead of IV infusion. And E would be incorrect because Tenecta place is FDA approved for the acute management of STEMI. It is used off label for ischemic stroke. Now we're going to dive into some literature looking at all to place versus Tenecta place head to head in the acute management of ischemic stroke. The first trial we're going to look at is the TNK S2B trial. And this trial was conducted in 2010. How this trial worked was 112 patients presenting with ischemic stroke within three hours of symptom onset were randomized to one of four arms, either the standard of care, all to place 0.9 milligrams per kilogram or connect to place at one of the three doses listed below. Main outcomes here were that Tenecta place 0.1 milligram per kilogram and Tenecta place 0.25 were not inferior to Alta place in mortality, early neurological improvement, and ICH rates. However, the Tenecta place 0.4 milligram per kilogram arm was terminated early due to increased incidence of intracranial hemorrhage. Some key findings that were not statistically significant but prompted further investigation from this trial include that Tenecta Place had a higher incidence of early improvement, 27.2% versus 16.1% of the Alta Place group, and the Tenecta Place group also had a lower overall mortality rate, 14.8% versus 25.8%. However, more research would need to be conducted to confirm this. It should also be noted that the Alta Place treatment arm had a higher initial average NIH stroke score upon presentation to the ED. Next trial we're going to take a look at is the Australian TNK trial. And this trial was conducted in 2012, 75 patients presenting within six hours of symptom onset were randomly assigned to one of three arms, and they are Alta Place. 0.9 milligrams per kilogram, and then Tenecta place at the two lower groups that we saw in the S2B trial, the 0.4 milligram per kilogram dose was not included in this, presumably due to the higher ICH incidence that we saw in the S2B trial. Some of the outcomes from this trial, the pooled Tenecta place groups outperformed all to place as patients had statistically significant differences in reperfusion at 24 hours, and clinical improvement at 24 hours defined as the change in their NIH stroke scale score. Some important things to note from this trial is that when you look at the pooled Tenecta place groups and break them down by dose, the Tenecta place 0.25 milligram per kilogram group outperformed the 0.1 milligram per kilogram group in all efficacy outcomes. This trial is a little different than the standard of care because it included patients who presented within six hours of symptom onset instead of the traditional three to four and a half hour time limit. However, only three of these participants were administered thrombolytic therapy after four and a half hours. In this group, the Alta Place group had significantly less patients with type 2 diabetes and tobacco use as compared to the Tenecta Place groups. And Tenecta Place 0.25 milligrams per kilogram outperformed Alta Place in the absence of severe disability at 90 days by 72% versus 40%. The final trial we're going to look at is the Extend IA TNK trial. And this one was recently performed in 2018. Here in this study group, we see patients were randomized within four and a half hours of symptom onset prior to thrombectomy to either the Alta Place standard of care group 
or tenecteplase 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. Primary outcomes in this was substantial reperfusion defined as more than 50% or absence of retrievable thrombus at initial angiogram. This was achieved in 22 out of 101 patients in the tenecteplase group and 10 out of 101 in the alteplase group. Upon statistical analysis, this was significantly favoring tenecteplase not only for non-inferiority, but superiority as well. This trial also featured more acute patients than the other two ones discussed earlier. The average NIH stroke score was 17 for both arms in this group. Secondary analysis also showed a favorable three-month modified Rankine scale reduction upon adjusted ordinal regression, and this was significantly favoring the tenecteplase group. This was achieved in 64% of tenecteplase patients versus 51% of the alteplase patients. Furthermore, the Extend IATNK Part 2 trial confirmed the high rates of reperfusion that we saw in the first part of the trial with tenecteplase. The main takeaway points I want you to get from this lecture is that tenecteplase is an evidence-based alternative to alteplase for the acute management of ischemic stroke. Both the 0.25 milligram per kilogram dose and the 0.4 milligram per kilogram dose appear in the 2018 AHA guidelines. However, no further benefits have been shown with the higher dose. However, we did see more incidence of interest, intracranial hemorrhage as we did in the S2B trial. Uh, patients receiving tenecteplase head-to-head -head were more likely to experience early neurological improvement and less long-term disability than their alteplase groups. Therefore, this drug is a reasonable alternative to alteplase in the acute management of ischemic stroke. I'd like to thank you for watching my presentation today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have for me.